In a little town named Sydney, there was a man named Adam living with his wife Sharon. They resided in a supposedly haunted house, as claimed by them. They operated a YouTube channel named Resbier, where they documented everything that had happened. Welcome back to a new video! Hello. We want to assure everyone that we're still alive. The thing hasn't taken us yet. Sharon, would you like to provide more details on our experience? Certainly. It all began on January 1st, 2024. Adam and I were just enjoying our time, minding our own business. We rewind a month, and Sharon is in the kitchen while Adam is cooking. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> You're funny. <laughs> well, life wouldn't be fun to live without humor. True. A loud knock is heard at the front door. What? Is someone knocking at this time? Hmm, I'll go check. Wait here, Sharon. Be careful, darling. <laughs> yes, I will. Welcome back, dear Creepypasta Radio followers. Your beloved radio host is back in action. Nice to have you as the host again. We all love your acting. Aw, that's sweet. Thank you. Anyways, this story involves four people sharing their experiences. We'll switch between Adam and Sharon, and three other incidents of creepy experiences. That's a new concept. Yes, and I hope you all enjoy it too. Back to the story. Adam opens the door, curious about the person knocking at their door at 3 a.m. Uh, hello? Hello. My name is Floster, spelled F-L-O-S-T-U-R, and I'm a police officer. Okay, and what do you want? I want to warn you guys about a seemingly naked man breaking into homes at night nearby. He was last seen down the road. What? That's weird. Is he dangerous? We believe so. He killed a young child in a family of four. The dad and the family died while driving the child to the hospital. He accidentally drove off a large cliff. Wow, uh, thanks for warning us. We'll be careful. Yeah, I hope so. Take care. I don't hope, but I think we'll meet again soon. Floster walked toward his car and drove away. Adam stood shocked at the door. Finally, he returned to Sharon. What was that? Apparently a naked man has been breaking into houses. What? What the heck are you talking about? He killed a young girl, and the dad dies while trying to drive her to the hospital. Okay, and why did he tell us that? Okay, and why did he tell us that? He thinks we could be in danger, so he warned us to be careful. Did you guys feel the tension? Because we definitely did. If you haven't noticed yet, the creepypasta character we took inspiration from is the character named The Rake. Ooh, that's a great character to include. Is that the only creepy character we will have in the story? Especially not. We have three more creepy stories in this episode left to share. Okay, so this will be the longest episode we've done yet. Well, kind of. Nice. Should we continue? Yes, back to the story. Sharon and Adam went to bed. Adam woke up at 2 a.m. because Sharon was shaking him and screaming for him to wake up. Sharon, what are you doing? She didn't answer. She just pointed toward the end of the bed and hushed Adam. At the end of their bed stood a very, very, very skinny creature with gray skin. What in the 17 old man is that? I, 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 I don't know. Hey, get the fuck out of our house! The creature turned towards them and started smiling before jumping out of the window. What the heck just happened? Well, I guess we found out that naked man everyone was talking about. Yeah. Adam and Sharon stopped updating their social media accounts for a month. They were too scared to continue life as normal. 
that was the first story. Did you guys enjoy it? Leave a comment down below if you did. Well, do you want to start story two? Yes, that's right, or something. We're going to start story two. As the narrator said, just in a moment. But first, a quick word to introduce our beloved crew behind the scenes. Wow, that's awesome. Who are they? Well, let's start with the founder of the channel, Rasmus. I can't pronounce the name 100%. But without him, none of this would have been done. Second, our scriptwriter, Alexander, who was employed just a week ago. He is the one writing this episode. Thank you for being a part of our podcast. And finally, our editor, Jonathan. You are one of the most important aspects of this channel. Without you, we wouldn't have the episode at all. Because we don't have your experience. Well, now that said, let's jump into story two. This story is a twist on the beloved animated tale and book, Winnie the Pooh. However, this version takes a darker turn, with elements of blood and horror. Once upon a time, there was a young boy named Christopher Robin, whose best friends were a group of stuffed animals, Tigger, Piglet, Owl, Eeyore, and Winnie the Pooh. They played together every day, until something strange began to unfold. All right. Who uh, wants to share a horror story by the fireplace? Oh, bother. I don't like these stories. Can't we tell love stories instead? No, Pooh. This is a perfect opportunity for me to share my literary work. Oh, I think Owl's stories might be scarier than the actual horror tales. Come on, guys. Don't spoil the fun. Christopher. We're small, defenseless creatures. We don't enjoy horror. Not that anyone cares about my opinion anyway. Eeyore, stop being so depressing. I wish it was as easy for me as it is for you to say. I'd like to be as carefree as Tigger. Absolutely hyperactive. Speaking of Tigger, where is he? He hasn't shown up for a week. Wait, you're right. What if he got, got, got eaten by a heffalump? Or even worse, by the back soon? Well, what a lovely day. Tigger gets killed by the Baxon. Who's next in line? Eeyore, shut up. Don't scare them more. They're already spooked enough. I could calm them down with my Wait, work. guys! What's that? Pooh pointed outside the window, and they all gasped at the sight. Tigger had large chunks of flesh missing, his eyes completely dark, and a psychopathic smile on his face. With the speed of flight, he zoomed toward the house, ready to attack. For viewers with a fondness for these childhood characters, please close the video now. This won't end well. Panic ensued among Christopher Robin and his friends as Tigger, once lively and hyperactive, now approached with sinister demeanor, his fur stained with blood, and his once jovial eyes replaced by unsettling darkness. The group scrambled to barricade themselves inside the house. What happened to you, Tigger? This can't be real. Real fun, Robin? Want to play a game? A game of survival? <laughs> survival? In this world, there ain't much survival for folks like us. The friends huddled in fear as Tigger began clawing at the windows and doors, his maniacal laughter echoing through the once welcoming home. This is unprecedented! I've never seen such behavior in the animal kingdom. I thought Baxon was supposed to be a scary one, not Tigger. I'm scared, Pooh. Oh dear Piglet, me too, me too. Christopher Robin felt a sense of responsibility, so he attempted to reason with Tigger. Tigger, it's me, Christopher Robin, with your friends. You remember? Friends? Friends are just toys waiting to be broken. <laughs> no, Tigger, no. 
No. <laughs> Please. <laughs> What's the matter, Robin? Lives flashing before your eyes? <laughs> Without warning, Tigger lunged at Christopher Robin, and the room descended into chaos. Friends fought desperately to escape, but the once bouncy and playful Tigger had become a relentless predator. As the struggle intensified, Eeyore, typically resigned to his fate, surprisingly stepped forward and pushed Christopher Robin out of harm's way. Go on, Robin. Save yourself. Maybe you'll find a happier ending. The others stared in disbelief as Tigger killed Eeyore, his once depressive friend now sacrificing himself for the group. Eeyore! No! The room fell in eerie silence as Tigger turned his attention to the remaining friends, his bloodlust unsatiated. The once joyful home filled with laughter and camaraderie now bore witness to a horrific transformation. Just waiting to be devoured by their once beloved friend, even in the most innocent of stories, the shadows can take over, and the characters are left to navigate the grim aftermath of their own narrative. Well, that got even me teary-eyed. Poor Pooh Bear. Should we proceed with the third story? Yes, I suppose we should. All right, let's move on to story three. Four astronauts had just launched into space, namely Tom, Alice, Joyce, and Bert. Their mission was to deploy a new space station created by Sweden. Outside the vast station-like structure, they worked to resolve their final issues. All right, everything seems to be set up. All right, I'm going to contact our boss. Oh. Wait a second. Hey, Bert! Come here! Is there a problem? Kind of. What's up? What's the problem? It seems like someone tried to... If I'm getting this right... It seems like someone tried to poison us. What? We're the only ones here. Well, it depends. There could be someone up here that we don't know of. Let me see. Bernd was a professional engineer, and with his experience, he examined the damage. Someone, or something, had introduced tear gas into their ventilation. The only fortunate thing was that the vent was not operational. Okay. This is just weird. I can't remember having a ventilation system outside a space station. It, it doesn't matter. What's the problem? Someone put tear gas inside. But because this ventilation doesn't work, the gas just disappeared. And what does that mean? Someone else is here with us. Here in space? But well, why wouldn't we have noticed? It's like there's been a rocket arriving here since we came. Well, it depends on one thing. They could have been here since before we got it. It seems like two things are clear. Someone is here with us, and they're trying to kill us. Okay, I think this is one of the most promising stories yet. Don't you think, narrator? Yes, it's beginning to get exciting. Let's not waste any more time. Let's continue the story for now. The astronauts exchanged worried glances, their minds racing with fear and suspicion. The weightless void of space seemed to close in around them as their realization of their perilous situation sank in. Okay, 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 okay. We need to find out who's here with us and why they, it, whoever, wants us dead! But how? We can't just float around the station looking for an intruder. We need to secure our position first. Let's lock down the station and gather in the control room. Maybe there are security cameras that can help. Agreed. Let's move quickly. The astronauts hurried, made their way to the control room, their every movement deliberate, eyes scanning for any signs of danger. As they reached the control room, Burnt accessed the security systems, hoping to uncover the identity of the mysterious intruder. Us. Hmm. The cameras are malfunctioning. We can't see anything. 
just great. What do we do now? We have to stick together. Maybe we can find some clues in the other modules. The group cautiously moved through interconnected modules of the space station, their senses heightened and their nerves on edge. The silence of space was broken only by the sound of their breathing, echoing in their helmets. Did anyone else hear that? Hear what? Like a distant sound, a metallic clang. The astronauts froze, listening intently, a subtle vibration resonating through the station, and a chilling realization struck them. Someone is sabotaging the station. We need to get back to the control room. Fast! The astronauts hurriedly retraced their steps, their minds clouded with fear and uncertainty. Upon reaching the control room, Bert attempted to regain control of failing systems. Ugh, the controls are locked! We're losing power! And life support is failing! Okay, this hardware is ancient! Okay, okay. Come on, Tom, you're fine, you're fine. We, we need to abort the mission! We have to get back to Earth! It's too late for that. The damage is done. I can't even communicate with ground control. Desperation hung in the air as the astronauts realized the inevitability of their fate. With the life support systems failing and an unknown saboteur lurking within the confines of the metal tomb, the darkness of space became a merciless adversary. Are we going to die here? I'm sorry, Joyce. What am I seeing? You aren't subscribed to Creepypasta Radio yet? Well, instead of just sitting there, click on the subscribe button down below instead. Now, back to the story. As the astronauts faced a grim reality of their impending doom, a cold silence enveloped the station. The flickering lights cast an eerie shadow on their resigned faces. In their final moments, they clung to one another, finding solace in their shared fear that bound them together. It's... It's so cold. At, at least we won't... We won't be alone. We should have seen this coming. The sabotage. The tear gas. It was all orchestrated. Suddenly... A distorted voice echoed through their communication system, breaking the haunting silence. You were never meant to make it back. Who's there? Why are you doing this? It's quick. Really. Sweden's pride turned into a floating tongue. Your demise will be a message. The astronauts exchanged bewildered glances, realizing the cruel truth. The saboteur was someone among them. Someone they had trusted. But who? Why? You were chosen because you discovered the truth about the secret experiments conducted in space. They couldn't risk you exposing them. The revelation hung in the air like dead weight. The real enemy was one of their own. A traitor who had doomed them to an agonizing fate. <laughs> Betrayed by our own mission. I should have foreseen. We were expendable. Just like the secrets they tried to hide. As life support systems sputtered and failed, the darkness of space swallowed the once hopeful astronauts. The saboteur's <laughs> laughter echoed through dwindling oxygen, a chilling soundtrack to their tragic end. And that's it, good folks, the last story. Well, anyway, as usual, see you in the next video. And remember, darkness always finds a way into your heart. Take care. Peace out.
You thought you could escape the past, but the past never forgets. It hungers for retribution.